Welcome to Marvelicious Toys. We bring you news and reviews of Marvel toys, statues, and more. Because not all Marvel collections can be bagged and boarded. They're not just toys, they're Marvelicious. Another web-slinging heroine. She's called Spider-Girl now because when she was introduced in Old Man Logan, Spider-Bitch isn't something that you can do in every comic. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm going to be honest with you. This feels like the figure I have to get to complete my Space Knight Venom. Really? I, yeah, I mean, I wasn't excited about it. She's not popping out of the package. It feels like just another female version of a Spider Woman character that I feel like we have a lot of, to be honest with you. Yeah, they have kind of overrun, in my mind, all the Spider men and women, every permutation into the ground. There are several Spider Women and Spider Girls. And... So you have Spider Dog, Spider Hamster. Spider Pig. Well, there's Spider Pig, yeah. Is it Spider Mom and, you know, Spider Uncle Ben? <laughs> now, this is actually Peter Parker's granddaughter. Peter Parker's daughter, Tanya, hooked up with Hawkeye. Of course! Because, wait, was he robbing the cradle or was Hawkeye super young? Hawkeye was robbing the cradle. Okay. <laughs> and so, this is Ashley Barton, their offspring. Oh, all right. Interesting backstory there, at least. And... Honestly, I've always taken her as very tan in the comics. They've almost made her look African-American in this toy. She's really dark-skinned. But given that she's Hawkeye and Peter Parker's offspring, that I think it's just really tan. You know, if you compare the skin tones to even Miles Morales from earlier in the wave, it's not, it's not quite that dark. Regardless of the skin tone or the ethnicity, it just the color scheme is not working. It's not popping. The red feels muted. The blue feels muted. The skin tone feels muted. They stretched out on Ashley Barton the webbing over her boobs. So it looks really funky. Look at her boobs. <laughs> Do you see it? <laughs> and then look at Silk. They didn't stretch it out. Nope. Silk's designer took into account boob stretchage yeah. and drew, drew accordingly. This This one looks like... They forgot about that, and she's stretching the bounds of those webs. Yeah, like, yeah, they it, designed it for someone flat-chested and then stuck her in it. Yeah, this goes down to what I think a lot of people complain about with how comic book heroines are drawn. How, if you put a spandex outfit on a woman, you don't see each individual breast as defined this way. <laughs> <laughs> and look, that poor spider's getting scrunched together in that clavage. Yeah, I... <laughs> I mean, that's just, I'm sorry. This figure is like a zero all the way around. The skin tone's a weird color, like almost like a, like a mud, like a, like almost like a grayish brown mud. The, the front just kills it completely. Although I, I guess the one part that is cool is she does have a really cool haircut and that's a new hairstyle we've seen. Check, check out the earrings. I love the earrings. Yeah, that's pretty cool. She's got earrings going up all the way around her earlobes. Yeah, but look at her boobs. <laughs> Seriously, that's so awful. All right, here's what I like about this character. I agree with what you're saying now that I see Britsky spider logo there. <laughs> and she has a bit of a really long neck. But I like this as a different outfit. I like that they went a little more muted with it versus the bright one so that she stands apart from other spider women. I like the character in general and i'm and again it just keeps rounding out the spider verse figures i was excited to get this i'm i'll admit it doesn't live up to my every hope and dream i agree that if they'd used silk's chest instead of this one the spider would look a whole lot better as it is it honestly looks like there's a couple oranges sitting on her chest it does it's terrible and i'm like some person who's like oh my god superheroes can't have boobs and wear spandex or whatever that's just poor planning on the design on this figure i'd call it out if there's something wrong with a male figure the same way <laughs> spider bulge exactly i mean if they bulged it out over there and stretched it i would say something but that just ruins the figure because it, it's comical <laughs> isn't it i mean come on you guys can laugh at boobs it's okay overall it's just not 
a figure that pops to me. And since I don't really have any love or history with this character, I wasn't, you know, out there being excited or anticipating the release of it. So after we have this wave of awesome classic Spider-Man villains and a new buck for Spider-Man, this just feels kind of like the also ran of the wave. I'll agree in that she comes with no accessories whatsoever. You know, she had a couple different hairstyles. She could have different hands. There's a lot of stuff they could have done. This one feels like, oh, we're cost cutting. All right, spider bitch, you lose it all. Yep. But she does come with the biggest build-a-figure piece here. She comes with the, the, the torso. So, you know, they needed that extra room in the packaging. But I suppose they could. They had plenty of room up above the torso in the packaging to put a head or a couple more accessories. So I can let them off the hook that easily. Thanks for watching this video. You can see full episodes of Marvelicious Toys with more collecting news and reviews at MarveliciousToys.com. We also have thousands of toy and collectible photos in our photo gallery. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Until next time. Make mine marvelicious.